You are recording. Thank you so much. So I, I want to be mindful of time. So I want to get started because I know Christy is so passionate about this topic. Um, so hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We're excited that you could come here for this event. So my name is Lynn Poland. I'm the co-founder of Kindred Beginnings along with Chrissy Beswick. And Chrissy and I started KB to help provide a safe space where people going through family building journeys can be supported, heard, and validated. So if you have any questions about our programs or how we can support you, please reach out to one of us or visit our website. We are always available. Um, really just thank you for giving yourself this time and space to join here to learn more about how you can reduce toxins in your body, in your environment, and for your health. Um, and th this number blew me out of the water. So there are about 62 toxic chemicals in the average home that you can be exposed to and up to 700,000 toxic chemicals in a day. It's absolutely mind blowing. And we know that exposure to a consumption of toxins disrupts our, homo our hormones and obviously affects our overall health and fertility is an extension of our health, right? So let's talk about how we can start making some shifts, some small manageable shifts to help reduce our toxin exposure. So I need to introduce Christy. She is a registered dietitian and wellness expert and a fellow fertility warrior. Um, Christy Klein is going to be sharing some common sources of toxins in your environment, our everyday products, how to make safe swaps and how to limit daily toxin exposures to reduce body burden in an effort to optimize your health and ultimately your fertility. Christy pursued a career in the field of nutrition after being diagnosed with PCOS at age 17. In 2014, she became a registered diet dietitian and graduated with a master's of science in clinical nutrition in 2019. She has spent her career practicing clinically in hospitals and skilled nursing facilities and also works with individuals to help them meet their nutritional goals through counseling. Christy is passionate about educating on nutrition and making choices to support, to support overall wellness by living a toxin-free life. And you can follow her wellness group on Facebook called the Toxin Free RD. It is awesome and I encourage you to join it. So welcome, Christy. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you for having me. So as Lynn said, I am a registered dietitian. I'm not an environmental toxin expert. Um, this has been something that I have become passionate about personally for my own personal reasons which is how I got into nutrition in the first place. So I am always happy to educate. That's a lot of what my group, the Toxin Free RD, is focused on. Um, so I'm going to share some of that with you guys here tonight in, you know, a uh, PowerPoint pl platform. So it was kind of hard for me to focus all my thoughts and get in everything I wanted to talk to you about. So this is a picture of all my crap before I ditched it and my, my motivation hanging above it. Um, I just had started to gather all my toxic products in one place. And before I decided to ship it out the door, um, I did donate it. <laughs> um, I was done with it. And um, that I'm glad I have this picture. So it's a, it's a nice reminder of, of how far we've come on our journey. Okay. So this can be a little bit of an overwhelming topic if it's something that you're not that you have not been exposed to or told about before. So I'm only letting you continue if you proceed with the mindset that you have to settle with, you did the best you could until you know better. And then when you know better, you do better because we can't guilt ourselves and we can't dwell in the past about, oh, if only I had known this, or maybe if I had known that, don't, don't even go there. It's just, we know what we know now and we're gonna make changes as we go forward. So a little bit about my story. Um, I joke that I was, I'm a former germaphobe and Cloroxaholic. I'm still pretty much a germaphobe, um, but I don't feel the need to Clorox everybody and everything in my path anymore. Now I joke that I'm a toxin phobe. Um, so I was diagnosed with PCS at 17. Me and my husband um, went through a year of trying, um, landed ourselves at the fertility clinic and um, we, were successful. This is my daughter, Charlotte. Um, and, you know, we had gone through the process of IUI and nowhere along the way um, was any of this ever mentioned to me. And not nutrition, not supplements, not toxic reduction. Um, 
sidebar, when we started to try again for our second child and the process of IVF supplements were brought up, um, but still never um, anything about the toxins we use or products we use on our bodies, except for the day you go for your egg retrieval. So if you've had an egg retrieval, you know that they tell you no perfumes, um, that it can be toxic. Um, am I saying this right? Was it for egg retrieval and embryo transfer that they make you do that? But um, if it can be harmful to our embryos that are outside of our body, certainly it's harmful to ourselves as we're putting things on our body. So um, that's a little bit of frustration and why I like to educate because I feel that this should have been brought up long ago um, along my journey. But I didn't really start to learn a whole lot about toxic chemicals until my daughter was diagnosed with eczema at about two months old. And um, I had always thought about what we were eating, um, but never really what the ingredients were and the products we were utilizing on our skin. So um, the top picture, um, May 2018, is how bad her skin was with me trying to treat it with conventional products. February 2019, the bottom left photo is her skin, still terrible, um, but it's actually use, using just more natural products and no toxic products. And it took until July for her to like fully heal with a lot of changes we've made. So sometimes we have to detox, our bodies have to detox from the toxins that we're using. So sometimes things get worse before they get better. Um, and that's just something to keep in the back pocket too. Um, so like I said, a lot of this is born of my personal story. So we're gonna go forward with that. What we're gonna talk about is where we find where we find toxins in our environment, chemicals compromising fertility, common toxins and their concerns, resources, because you're not gonna walk away from this talk knowing everything. This is um, your first trip down the rabbit hole, I don't know, <laughs> and safe swaps um, available to you guys with discounts. So we'll talk about those too because I want to present solutions and not just problems tonight. So body burden. What is body burden? It sounds like a very, ooh, what's that? Um, it is simply the toxic chemicals that build up in your body over time. Our body doesn't process them all out. They come from a variety of sources. They're almost always there because we just continually are using products, shampoo, conditioner, cosmetics, skincare. The goal is, you know, reduction, not perfection. Like Lynn said in the beginning, we are exposed to so many chemicals. Our bodies are so strong and so smart and they generally know, you know, what to do, but sometimes they get bogged down. You're never gonna be fully toxin free. Um, it's just not a thing. We live in a toxic world. So just keep that in mind too. So where and why I say that? Because we find toxins everywhere. Our water supply, our air, our indoor air and our outdoor air, our food, our food and beverage packaging, body products, cosmetics, perfume, air freshener, cleaning products. Um, not only just absorbing through skin when using these products, but also breathing in um, the compounds in the air. Materials around us, furniture, fabric, rugs, paints, um, these volatile organic compounds that are emitted gases, as I was talking about, dust, Dust is just a whole bunch of chemicals lying around your house. Uh, plastics and then outside. So take your shoes off before you get in the house. That's one way. That's probably the easiest way you're going to start reducing toxic chemical exposure. So leave your shoes at the door. So what in the world, you know, are the ones we need to focus on? Because you're going to have an overwhelming feeling of like, I don't know what to use or what to do because I just don't want to use anything anymore. Um, you want to focus on the ones that are right now along your journey going to be most likely to compromise fertility. They are hormone disruptors, otherwise called endocrine disruptors. Phthalates, um, which are used as plasticizers and solvents. They're not listed on a label. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about them, but synthetic fragrances, for example, you can almost always guess that phthalates are used because they're added to enhance the fragrance. Um, you'll more so see like a marketing term like phthalate free to know that it's not in the product rather than turning over a label and seeing that it's in there. Um, 
parabens. We've probably all heard of parabens. They're, um, they've got a bad reputation for being linked to breast cancer. And they are. Um, but paraben free is used as a marketing term a lot. It doesn't necessarily mean that the company has gone the extra mile to, to not use another unsafe preservative in its place. Um, I don't know how to say this word, perfluoral alkyl acids. Sounds good enough. Think nonstick coating. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Pesticides, which are, you know, from our food supply, from our environment around us, and then triclosan, which is also found in antibacterial products. Um, I encourage you to like look back on these slides because I'm not going to read everything, but this is like a nice little chart that I found that kind of shed some light on like where you're going to find these things like phthalates are in products that have increased flexibility and durability, found on toys, footwear, food packaging, metal plastic tubing, medical plastic tubing, and personal care products. Um, so that's a nice little, um, like if you go back to the endocrine disruptors, it's a picture of what all of those look like. So why is it called an endocrine disruptor? The chemical structure of the compounds resembles estrogen and other hormones in the body. So our body gets confused. They, they think they're hormones and then they are, our body processes change signals that there's hormones in our bodies that shouldn't be there. And what can that do? It can unbalance our hormones, which can lead to regular menstrual cycles, increased miscarriage risk, um, egg issues, implantation issues, um, infertility, P PCOS and endometriosis. So obviously anybody that's had a diagnosis of infertility, we don't need anything messing with our hormones any further than they're already being messed with. So um, I have a bunch of slides I'm gonna run through very quickly, but again, I put these in here because I want you guys to have them as a resource. So BPA. Um, found in plastic packaging. So these are the kind of highlights of ingredients and chemicals that you want to avoid. You know, if I, I think I picked a 10, like of most important that I want you to avoid. BPA found in plastic packaging can leach into products. Um, and you're gonna see that this has a impact on the life cycle. A lot of these that I'm gonna talk about. So fertility, um, reproductive health and children. So the end goal here is it's for us to be as healthy as we can to create a healthy human in our body. Um, can impact, impact brain behavior and prostate development in children. Triclosan, antibacterial agent found in toothpaste. Soaps, um, cosmetics linked to endocrine and thyroid disruption. We all need a functioning thyroid for fertility as well. 1,4-dioxane is a contaminant. Um, that is a known carcinogen. Phthalates um, linked to birth defects. Okay, so again, I strongly usually recommend on like labels to avoid getting caught up by marketing terms. Like you always wanna turn the product over and look at the ingredients, but when it comes to phthalates, it is encouraging to see on the front that it's, you know, phthalate free. Um, still means you have to check the ingredients for other things, but that is mainly where you're going to find out how to avoid phthalates. Talc, we've probably all heard about talc, baby powder, um, links to uh, cancer and organ um, system toxicity. Oh, look at me. I was getting ahead of myself. No carcinogen. <laughs> okay. Um, again, it's a contaminant. It's not an ingredient. It's a contaminant that... Um, is, is a byproduct of the process of creating other things and it's not gonna be listed on the label. So that's where it gets tricky. Um, and that's why this requires more research on your part as you go down this path of learning about these things because it would be so nice if we could just be like, oh, that has 1,4-dioxane in it and put it back on the shelf, but it's not quite that simple. And look at this, it contaminates up to 46% of personal care products. So you're probably using a product with 1,4-dioxane in it, but we can make changes because there are safe products out there. We don't have to use these. Boric acid. Um, 
used uh, in personal care products and can impact fetal growth in high doses. Japanese honeysuckle. This one sounds like a beautiful little flower put into my product, um, but the truth is it mimics parabens. So the body has no idea and it looks just like a paraben to the body and therefore it disrupts your hormones just as a paraben would. Synthetic fragrance. If you can make one change, it would be to ditch anything with fragrance or perfume on the label in the ingredients section. Um, that alone would be ditching thousands of chemical options. Companies are not required to disclose what's in their fragrance. So they can write fragrance and they don't have to tell you what chemicals are used to make it. So there could be thousands of options. You have no idea. Um, so avoiding fragrance altogether is, is a wonderful way to start your journey. There are safe scented products like scented with essential oils or um, natural components that are not the same as synthetic fragrance. So I'm not saying you can't ever smell anything ever again. Homosali, this is a big one in sunscreen and um, penetrates the skin easily and remains in human tissue and breast milk and is linked to endocrine disruption. And benzoclonium chloride, this is one that you're gonna find in hand sanitizers and soaps, which I thought was important because we are using a lot of that right now. It's commonly found in these products and it is shown to decrease fertility with repeated use. BHA and BHT, these are preservatives found in our food, found in our cosmetics, also linked to reproductive toxicity. Parabens, we talked about oxybenzone is another big one in sunscreens linked to reproductive toxicity, um, something important to be aware of. Okay. So, yeah, so you know, we're all like, we're all like, what? <laughs> so these are, I think it will be easier if you, after the fact, take a look at the slide when I'm done talking. And I should have like, well, I actually have a slide that you can like take a screenshot of. And when I get to that, it's a nice little snapshot of like what ingredients to avoid on an ingredients label. And these are the ones that I picked out to highlight that are most related to fertility, reproductive health, uh, child injury, rather. Um, does that make sense a little bit? Yes, and it's, it's just so much. And really, and you said this, you know, kind of at the beginning of your presentation, um, we're surrounded by this and we can't be perfect with it. And so it's just about making and I know you're going to speak to it, but it's just about making small changes that will then lead into something more, right? And so, but it's a lot. Like when you look at all of this, it's a lot. It is a lot. And it's scary. It's overwhelming. Um, but the end point is that you don't have to use products that have these ingredients in them because there are safe options. You're not doomed to do it. Um, and once you become familiar with them, you will know what to avoid. So I'm taking us a slight bit off this topic um, to go into random but important, which is um, the per and polyfluoral fluoroalkyl substances. Um, if you have heard of Teflon, that's what I'm talking about, um, like a nonstick pan. These are, there's about 6,000 of these chemicals, so good luck trying to avoid them all. Um, they're called forever chemicals. They don't fully degrade and they accumulate in the body and the environment over time. Um, they are just generally known to be toxic. Um, so they can also affect our bodies and health as well. So that's another um, slide I will get to, but there's things that we can do to change what we're using, uh, like our pots and pans. It's a simple swap. So why do we need to make changes? I just saw a question appear in the bottom here, let's see. Yeah, Christy, I wanted to make sure you could see that. So Amina Christine asked, and I know you are gonna talk about this earlier, but just sort of thinking about, you know, instead of, or in addition to avoiding toxins, um, I know you'll talk a little bit later about some suggestions for brands or options that are safer, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Yeah, Thank and I'm you. gonna link you up to all of my resources too, so you have access to them. Um, so why do we need to make changes? 
other than it being scary, Lynn. That's not my, not my goal. I don't want to scare anybody. Um, so this is actually a little scary. In a 2004 test by the Environmental Working Group, which is a nonprofit organization that focuses on um, promoting safe products and, and educating consumers, uh, revealed a staggering 287 chemicals and toxins were found in the cord blood of newborn babies. That actually seems low, doesn't it? Considering the amount of uh, chemicals we're exposed to on a daily basis. But this include, included pesticides, consumer product ingredients, waste from burning coal, gasoline, and garbage. Other chemicals found 180 cause cancer in humans or animals, 217 are toxic to the brain and nervous system, and 208 cause birth defects or abnormal development in, in animal tests. A developing child's chemical exposures are greater pound for pound than those of adults, so they're just smaller. Um, they have immature or porous blood-brain barriers, which allows greater chemical exposures to the developing brain. Children have lower levels of some chemical binding proteins, so they are um, like absorbing more of these chemicals and they're reaching target organs. Babies' organs and systems are rapidly developing and are more vulnerable to damage from chemical exposure and systems that detoxify and excrete chemicals are not fully developed. I always say, and this is why I tell you guys you cannot guilt yourself, um, but I always wish I had known what I know now before I got pregnant with my daughter um, when I some of these staggering, you know, statistics. So here is my, you know, slide that you should print out when we hop off this call. Um, and this is, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, but this is put together by um, a group of women who are educating tons of women on um, avoiding toxic chemical exposure and personal care products. And these are the most commonly found harmful ingredients. And you, as you start to shop or look around or look at ingredients, this is a great little pull it out of your purse and have a cheat sheet of what you'll see on a label that you want to avoid. So for example, ethyl paraben, it still says paraben in it. Like it, here it alone says parabens, but there are other, where was the other one? Methyl paraben. So anything with paraben in the ending. So once you get familiar with this, um, and start to know what to look for, it will stick out to you. Like, oh, it says paraben at the end of it. So I know that's a paraben and that's part of that group of family that I don't want. Are these that you're showing us mainly in foods, cosmetics, cleaning supplies, or all of the above? I'm talking specifically tonight about mostly personal care. Personal care products. Cleaning products um, rather than foods. Um, so this would be specific to personal care and cleaning products. All right, so this is where you're gonna start because I'm giving you tip of the iceberg tonight. You're gonna start looking through some of these websites. So Campaign for Safe Cosmetics, these are a bunch of organizations that are working towards safer products and informing consumers. So they have resources, things you can learn about, you can read more about the different ingredients. Um, Breast Cancer Prevention Partners, Made Safe is another one. And the Environmental Working Group is a big one. Um, they have a couple databases called Skin Deep, Healthy Cleaning, Pesticides and Produce, Tap Water, and Food Scores. So they do talk a lot about food um, on their website. You can actually look up different food products, see how they rate in terms of safety. Um, you can look up cleaning products like a Lysol toilet bowl cleaner, and you can look up like your Aveeno body lotion on Skin Deep. Like you can actually Google the product in their database and see how that product rates per their rating system, um, which is not entirely foolproof, but it is a great place to start for beginners. So I highly suggest um, playing around. And I actually, at some point in this, we're going to pull one up together so I can show you why I say it's not. And I just want to repeat what you said before. If you are Googling your Aveeno moisturizer and it comes up with a poor rating, I don't know what the rating is, but you know, this is not, nothing to feel badly about. We didn't know any better. And so now it's just about making some, now that we have the information, making informed decisions Perfect. next time. Yes. 
So additional information. Oh, These are can you hear me or not? I don't know. Oh, hey. I was gonna say also like you don't have to throw your vino away right away. Like I always try to do it like when I was out of something and I bought something new. That's when so you're not like wasting money, if that makes sense. I think I have that in here somewhere too. Oh, yeah. sorry. I better that. next time. No. Yeah. And I love that you're here. I was like, wait, I know that voice, but I did not know you were on here. Hello. Yeah, I, I suck, Christy. <laughs> I couldn't get on. Not Christy had to help me a lot. It. So, um, homework. These are resources that you'd need to watch. They're just great. Um, Toxic Beauty was a documentary. Um, Stink. Stink is specific to um, synthetic fragrances. The Devil We Know and Dark Waters both talk about Teflon, those forever chemicals, the, the nonstick. Um, the Bleeding Edge is unrelated to what I'm talking about, but it talks about um, the medical device industry. And I just think that that's something important to know about as we all are um, medical patients. And the story of cosmetics, um, if you do nothing except what I, I don't know what I'm saying, just watch this one. It's really important. I like it. It's like eight minutes. It's quick. The YouTube one, the story of cosmetics and it breaks it down easily. So sometimes I think watching all these things and realizing how widespread our issues are, is that you can't feel bad about it, like Lynn's saying, because it's literally impossible to avoid it. So you can only do so much and you can only control so much. So if you make some changes at home, great. But when you go out to the store and you use the public bathroom and you use their hand soap or you walk into your friend's house and they're burning a candle that you've made a safe swap for at home, like it's okay. So, and I talk about that at the end, but we want to change the things that we use most routinely first. So with that said, how is this legal? So I don't know. Let's watch a video so we can take a break from me talking. That was Lynn's face sneaking in there, wasn't it? So this is a clip between, well, let's see if it goes. Okay, good. It didn't go. Congresswoman, um, Ms. Eshoo, Chair of the Health Subcommittee Questioning, Dr. Susan Main of the FDA. So the FDA, quote unquote, oversees the safety of personal care products, but they don't set limit, limits for common harmful contaminants and products. So for example, that 1,4-dioxane, the contaminant I was talking about, like the FDA might know that a product's contaminated with it, but they can't say, hey, you can only have this much contaminant in there. Um, the FDA doesn't require companies to list the contaminants on the products, which is why they're not listed on the products. And they can't require a company to test their product prior to it being sold. So I don't really know what they do do for us, but it's not a whole lot. And this is very startling, but it, it's just the reality. Uh, I, I want to ask her? some uh, questions of you in a simple yes. Can you guys hear her? Okay. No, it's fine. Um, uh, the FDA's, um, authority over the safety of baby lotion. First, can the FDA uh, uh, require a review of baby lotion for safety before it comes to market? No, cannot. Can the FDA require the manufacturer not to use a toxic ingredient, for example, formaldehyde uh, in its baby lotion? No. Is the manufacturer required to register with the FDA before selling its baby lotion? No. So, I think my, oh, my first statement is I mean, true. Or uh, once the baby lotion comes to market, can the FDA require uh, safety information about the baby lotion? No. If the baby lotion has caused uh, bad reactions uh, in the babies, can the FDA require a recall? No. If the manufacturer is aware of the baby's bad reactions, would the manufacturer be required to report that to the FDA? No. Well, I think everybody's paying rapt attention here. In the uh, in our country today, could uh, cosmetic products for sale to use on children or infants with uh, unknown ingredients and no safety review? Um, 
if the product is dangerous, the FDA would not be able to require a recall. You already said that. Um, and uh, obviously we need to, uh, I think, empower the FDA uh, to do more to protect Americans. I mean, given all the no's that you just uh, answered, uh, I, I think we have a real problem on our hands. Yeah, you think? How do you guys feel after watching that? Yeah, you think? What? what? Yeah, you think? Like, we do have a real problem on our hands. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, so what do you think? Um, Mina or Lauren, if you want to talk, but I, uh, I thought that somebody was overseeing the safety of products before they ended up on the shelf. I, I, until I went down this rabbit hole, I didn't realize that there really was no, um, regulations regarding personal care. Food is totally different. I don't want you to think you're eating <laughs> crazy things in your food. There are a lot, a lot more regulations when it comes to food and they're totally lacking for personal care industry. And that includes like supplements too, right? That they oversee the supplements? That they do not. That they do not. Yeah. For the most part, they're not FDA approved. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing, but they're a little far stretched. And if you watch that other, um, the bleeding edge on Netflix, um, really not sure what the FDA does for us. So again, Lynn has probably already said this to everybody in this group, but you have to be your own advocate and um, it stops at nowhere. You have to be your own advocate for literally everything. So how do you like live now that I told you all this horrifying information? Yeah, give us some, give us some <laughs> verbs in our sentences as Dr. Phil would say. We have to become an ingredient expert and we have to be aware of greenwashing. So it's that. Tell us what to use, Christy. Just give us the things and say, here's what you're allowed to use. Yeah. So much easier. That's what I'm saying. Just right? tell me where to go. Just tell me what to use. use. I don't want yeah. to do all the work. Keep all these lies. But greenwashing, it's something to be aware of. So what I want you to use is a product that you can turn over read the ingredients label, you know exactly what every ingredient is. I do not want you to walk into Target and say, this one has beautiful green leaves on it, and it says it's sulfate-free and safe and gentle and all these other crappy marketing terms that really don't mean anything. I want you to know how to read labels. These terms are often red flags of a green wash product. Sensitive, natural, green, means nothing, okay? Nothing. Um, Let's see if I can get to my slide. Wait, natural? Go back. Natural? They can just put that on the label and it doesn't really mean natural? Mm -hmm. Chemical free, botanical, earth friendly. So these are all marketing terms. You will find these all like on the front of the label. You need to actually, here, I do have a product next to me. This is a safe product. Um, so even this, okay, you probably can't see that, but even this safe product, has hypoallergenic listed. But what you're gonna do is really always turn around to the ingredients and read them. And you're gonna know how to read them in six to nine months. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna give you tools to figure out how to read them. So my advice, keep the list of the banished ingredients um, from that slide so that you know where um, to find them. One of the quickest ways to read an ingredient label is to look at the bottom of the ingredients first. So ingredients are listed in order of weight in the product and preservatives are almost always last. So the harmful preservatives are almost always listed last. Um, and you can search individual ingredients on that environmental working group skin deep database or health cleaning database. If you come across an ingredient and you're like, this isn't on Christie's banished list, but it's not coconut oil, so what is it? Then you can look that up on Environmental Working Group. Okay, so follow my group um, if you have Facebook, facebook.com slash group slash the Toxin Free RD. Um, in my group, I have a Toxin Free Master List. So that's a list of safe products when, if you're looking for a safe shampoo, if you're looking for a safe toothpaste, if you're looking for a safe um, toilet bowl cleaner. I have an entire list of 
products. And if you don't have Facebook and you need more information, feel free to email me. Um, that's also listed here. I am a consultant for both Norwex and Crunchy. Both are um, products that focus on eliminating all toxic chemicals from their products. Crunchy is the group of women that um, has taught me so much. So getting involved with them, I have learned so much from their corporate team as well as um, individual consultants, all of whom are leading with education. Um, I like, for example, that banished graphic was made by my group of crunchy women that I'm involved with, and they are just so empowering in terms of figuring out what's safe, um, and a lot of the education comes from them, so I have to give them credit where credit is due. Um, getting involved with them and staying involved with them has helped me to learn a lot and be able to actually speak confidently on this topic and feel like I can guide somebody to selecting a safe product. So part of what I'm going to go through some safe swaps of what I use and offering you guys um, and whoever is ending up watching this after the fact that offer stands for you about 20% off Norwex products and free shipping on Crunchy orders if you mention this talk. Um, and you can get in contact with me after and I can apply the discounts if you do wish to place Did you say free shipping on Crunchy? I did. Oh, amen. Order, order all of it. I need like 15 char char charcoal bars and like, yeah. There's a, um, it goes so fast. There's a sale today too. It's a sale today? On um, the sunscreen. sunscreen. Yeah. So, okay, sorry, I digress. It's okay, we got some crunchy fans. How did you know about the sale on the sunscreen? It's on Facebook. But you should have got an email too. Yeah, I didn't. Okay, so, okay, I need to move my own face out of the way here on the screen. I don't know if you can see me doing that or not. I don't know. Uh, oh, I can minimize it. Okay. My face was in my way. So I am not a Branch Basics representative, but I love Branch Basics. So you're like, oh my God, what do I do? We're going to work smarter, not harder. So Branch Basics is a ditch everything and switch. Anything that you have in a spray bottle in your home right now can be thrown out and replaced with Branch Basics. I can almost guarantee it. Um, I do have a, a referral link for $10 off your first purchase right here. Um, their starter kit is $69. Your cost would be $59 with the um, coupon. I feel like my brain is, I've overwhelmed myself. So this has one bottle of concentrate and it comes with, they actually have the options now for either plastic or glass bottles. So I would opt for the glass, um, but it can make this one container of soap can make three all purpose bottles, three uh, streak free bottles, which is place like a Windex, three bathroom um, cleaning bottles, which is just a higher concentration of soap, three bottles of hand soap, um, and then laundry detergent. So it's basically a concentrate. It's safe ingredients and you can use it all over your home. I um, wrote that I also love they have like a little travel spray and they have like a little travel hand soap, both of which I use. We have used this for everything except laundry detergent. Personally, I just had something else I liked using. Um, but do we have any questions about this? This is a very easy swap. And is anybody using it? Lauren or uh, I do not use branch basics. basics. So I, I, this is like a great start for somebody that just wants to make a quick swap. Another really easy swap um, is in your kitchen and bathroom, soaps. Make your own. First of all, it saves like a bajillion dollars, reduces your plastic use. My favorite pump bottles, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a Norwex consultant, Th these just came out from Norwex like a couple months ago. Um, I have used a bunch of foaming hand pumps from Amazon and they've all crapped out on me, like either got clogged or just straight up broke. These are real sturdy glass and they have the silicone bottoms and I, I just love them, they work well. How do I make my own soap? 
I buy Dr. Bronner's. It's This is another similar to the Branch Basics in that it has 18 uses. So you could also just start with this and find other ways to use it, such as make your own spray bottle. Or, um, Norwex also has spray bottles glass you can buy. But I just put like a quarter of the Branch Basics, I'm sorry, the, the Dr. Bronner soap in the um, glass foaming. And then I fill it with water. It's that easy. And it has different scents and they're all scented with essential oils. So you can still have your, you know, scented hand soap and you can see the ingredients over here. Um, organic coconut oil, um, organic palm, organic olive, and then their organic uh, hemp jojoba and then their um, essential oil. This is easy spot. All right. Lynn was talking up the charcoal bars. I never was a bar soap person. So this is a crunchy product. And they actually are planning soon to release crunchy, um, a, a crunchy bar for children. Um, it comes in compostable wrappers. So absolutely no plastic. Um, no product loss because there's always stuff at the bottom of that plastic bottle we can't ever get to. No preservatives in the, in the soap. Eco-friendly. You don't have to worry about bacteria hanging out on the soap. It's, it's not a thing. Um, the facial bars last me about six to seven months. And the body bar for myself, had I use it, well, neck down, um, <laughs> five to six months. And it's all I use in the shower. Um, and I have like the most sensitive skin in all the land and it's just wonderful. I don't ever feel dry. Um, you can see I did put the ingredients here of one of the products just because I couldn't fit it all. But it's organic where it can be organic. And that is important because we also can absorb chemicals through our skin from personal care products that are not organic. So for example, there's oat kernel flour in this gentle facial bar um, that is organic. And if it was not, there's the potential for pesticide contamination. So that's something super advanced to consider and not really ever something I bring up to someone at the start of their journey because then they're just like, this girl is talking crazy talk. Um, but it is important to me when making a swap to uh, companies that prioritize organic ingredients. And Crunchy is just getting started. They're a small company started by one is a nurse that has studied um, environmental toxins and the other is a businesswoman. They're friends and they started this company. It's a small company and they're growing very rapidly. What were you going to say? Uh, I'm laughing because I'm like, okay, I have to offer myself a little bit of compassion because I've been using the facial bar on my body, not knowing that there was a body bar. So clearly I need some <laughs> body bars. Oh my gosh. Well, the body bars are cheaper. Yeah, clearly. They, that's, that's why I was like, I go so fast. But now I know why it's going so fast because I'm using, <laughs> using the wrong soap. But I'm offering myself some compassion and grace because I did not know any better. I did not know there was a body bar. And now we will be... Okay. The body bars are bigger and they are less expensive because the ingredients are different. The charcoal facial bar has a higher concentration of oils because we're using it on our face and it's more for moisturizing properties that we don't necessarily need. From the Lynn, so your arms are looking super good from using... <laughs> Well, that's crunchy. just my, my whole family is everybody's using it. So like, every, like the three of us are showering in like the one shower. And so, you know... <laughs> It's good. It's like, it's going so fast. And I'm like, I ordered like my last order. I was like, I need like four of these. And she's like, Dude, okay, thanks for your order. And I was like, now she knows why. And I was like, crazy, you, like um, bulk ordering. <laughs> sidebar, keep them out of the direct stream of water. And I like to keep them on a soap lift. Um, I, I have one of those. Yeah. yeah just because I didn't, I did not know how to care for bar soap. It's something I never used. So that's that was all I ever used. And so anyway, okay. I wrote that down. I learned something new. So thank you. So let's talk about what I used to use. Hold on. Now I'm going to, I think I have to, no, I don't want to, what do I want to do here, Chrissy? Is she on here? I'm okay, here. What are you yeah, trying, what are you trying to, do? to do, Chrissy? I want, 
Yeah. I want to open this environmental working group link. You didn't link it. I you know. didn't. You didn't link it. So you might not be able to, but I can pull it up and see if I can get it in the chat for you while you're talking. Oh, all right. Yeah, so go ahead. The slide, Because if you can, and then if you did that, I'd be able to click it. Yes, oh. yes. Just get, just give me a second. I'll see if I can get it up for you. We're going to skip this slide. We'll come back to it. Kitchen swap. Um, this is a Norwax product. They have their dishwasher powder and their rinse aid, and they are free from all these things. Dyes, bleach, ammonia, preservatives, phosphates. Um, they don't test on animals, no animal derived ingredients. Um, so this is another, you know, easy uh, swap. 45 loads for this concentrated powder um, with the rinse aid. One of the main concerns of like your dishwashing liquid, et cetera, is, can it, wait, can anyone guess? what ingredient might be in those products that is of concern. Begins with an F. Come on, Lauren, you know what it is. I don't know, is it F? I was gonna say formaldehyde, but that can't be right. What? Um, I feel like, it's fragrance. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> fragrance. Just, it's not like okay. Um, Great smells. Right? Okay. I can that almost smell Cascade and I haven't used it in years. Like when you open the dishwasher, you get hit with that smell and you know that your product has had fragrance in it. Um, so this is, you know, I don't really want my dishes to smell like anything. I want them to smell like my food. Um, laundry room. Lauren can speak to this detergent, maybe. Um, yes. But okay. I, I do like the Norwex powder. I was always using um, jugs of the like, like free and clear or something like that. And I switched to powder. Um, sometimes, so for me, a lot of my swaps was trying something totally new and I expected to hate everything. And I actually like everything a whole lot more. I find with powder, it's a lot easier for me to control how much I'm using. Um, you don't need a whole lot. There's a hundred loads in this one bag. And you're not constantly like throwing out plastic jug after plastic jug of laundry detergent. <clears throat> if you have dryer sheets, that's a very easy thing to ditch um, chemicals because of the fragrance. And you can swap to um, wool dryer balls, which uh, Norwex also has, which help. We were having issues with our dryer not drying our clothes very well. Like everything was still like semi damp. And um, really annoying and dryer balls totally help jostle the clothes around, um, soften and dry them better. So it makes your dryer more efficient. But again, no fragrances, no chlorine, no dyes, no phthalates, bleach, ammonia, optical brighteners. Um, I also, this is very powerful. So this cleans like some of my microfiber cloths very well from Norwex um, and it cleans, if I ever have like really stinky laundry or something uh, it's just like really dirty, I'll do like a deep clean with it because um, it's so powerful that I can, like I said, use more and it just works really well. Just because something is toxin-free does not mean you're giving up on performance. I will say that for Crunchy. I will say that for Norwex. I will say that for a lot of the products I've tried. I've never, okay, I can't say back, I can't say never. The only product I have backpedaled on is toilet bowl cleaner. Once in a while, you just need the real deal when it comes to toilet bowl cleaner. Literally everything else I have been able to swap without being like, ugh, I want to use the real thing. I know Lynn and, Lynn and Lauren have made a lot of swaps, so if you want to speak to that, go for it. No, I have not. I have made small swaps over time, and to Lauren's point, like, I threw out my deodorant, I bought better next time. Like, I finished what I had, and then I bought better next time. Um, and, you know, I mean, and Christy, I've reached out to her and said, like, hey, like, what's what are some ideas for my next swap here? I still have a long way to go, but I have come a long way as well, so the portion of the end. Just so you know, Christy, Christy, Christy has linked that link for you for the Dove in the chat. 
so I'll, uh, so I'll say for laundry room. So if you ask my husband, I'm like a laundry, I love doing laundry. So it's a very odd thing. I know, but, um, I really like, and I'm not sorry, Christy, I'm taking away from your thing, but I, there's another product I like called my green fills. Mm -hmm. Um, and it can, you can ship like whenever you want it to ships to you. I really enjoy, um, I don't like scents anyhow. So I use the unscented laundry wash and laundry rinse with like my workout clothes. I just sometimes use, um, the laundry wash and some, some vinegar, um, cause you know, I don't use fabrics. Don't, I don't use fabric softener at all, not in the wash or in the dryer. So the vinegar fluffs up my towels and, um, helps with the, you know, the stinky workout clothes. Um, but I do like my green fills. Um, mm -hmm. they're totally and, safe too. They're, they're products. And yeah, I think, I think their products are, are pretty good too. Um, so, um, that's just some, another option not to take away from Christie's options, mm -hmm. but, um, it's just one that I really, I like. And their stain remover is like killer. It's like, oh, it's great. So the stain stick. Yeah. Yeah. Not on pre-treated stains. <laughs> on new stains. New stains. Okay. <laughs> I spent a lot of time hoping it was going to solve my past problems, but it didn't. Um, <laughs> all right. So I will get to that. I'll come back to that link in the chat. Um, thank you, Chrissy. So here is another ditch and switch um, for Norwex. Oh, I didn't put the uh, costs and everything, but you can, um, for, like I said, for Norwex, you can go to norwex.biz. I don't even think I, I may have linked it in an earlier slide, but um, just contact me via email. I have to, if you want something from Norwex, I have to put the order in for you to apply my discount. Um, but Swiffer dusters, I was like, what the heck? Even these things have uh, chemicals. Like obviously if you're using the ones with Febreze and they're scented, there's chemicals. But even if you're using the unscented ones, they still have mineral oil, um, which can have uh, contaminants in it. So everything is, you know, there's typically a safer option for everything. Um, I did put this package, um, which is a lot of what I recommend people get started with my microfiber. So microfiber removes like 99% of, of um, dirt and bacteria from a surface. It's like a really powerful cleaning option. Um, and they have this package that is the like Enviro wand, which is the um, duster, Enviro cloth, which can clean pretty much anything. Um, and microfiber picks up dirt and in ways, like if you've never used microfiber, it's really kind of fascinating. Um, and then a window cloth, which you could totally replace all sprays um, like for your window and use a damp um, window cloth as well. And then the dusting mitt, which is really easy to utilize without having to like spray and get a paper towel. And, uh, you know, it just makes things easier and then you just throw them in the wash and you're good to go for next time. Um, and they also contain something called backlock, which is uh, silver woven into the fabric. It's not like a chemical additive. It is um, designed in there to, as the product dries, it kills off any bacteria, mold, mildew. I have like um, ditched a lot of paper towels uh, for environment purposes, but also just uh, a couple other reasons. But I use like the Norwex cloths and they last for multiple uses. If you wring them out, put them air dry and use them again, they don't stink like a normal like washcloth. Okay, let me go to the chat. Maybe. Alrighty. So why I say that environmental working group is not foolproof. So they have a environmental working group verified symbol, which you'll see on some products. Um, ones and twos are green, three, four, five, six, somewhere in the middle, and then the reds are the worst. So you're like, oh, all right, well, this Dove body wash, it's only a four. I mean, it's not a 10, right? So we obviously don't want to be in the reds, you know, if we're in the 
oranges, we have room for improvement. Um, and if we're in the greens, we're good to go. But I wanna tell you why I feel that this is misleading. Not that they're trying to mislead, but that I want you to be you know, empowered consumers. So when you scroll down, it will tell you like where the ingredients concerns are, um, whether there's no concern or a high concern. So this one has the highest concern for aller um, allergies and use restrictions. And it, you can read what different rating systems mean. But if you come down here, you will see that there is a red ingredient red rated ingredient in this product. So for me, that's a no, especially because it's fragrance. Um, so essentially their overall rating is an average and I don't love that. I wanna use products, I want you all to use products that are ones and twos, that you don't have to worry about any of the ingredients in there. I will tell you BHT, phenoxyethanol, um, SLS, they're all on the banished ingredients list. There's documented resources, um, research that they're not healthy for us. And I'm gonna show you one more. Um, my Crunchy website, if you go to explore, this explore tab, and you go over to banished ingredients, which is where that list came from, and you click on any one of these banished ingredients, like. That's where a lot of the slides in this beginning of this talk came from, benzoclonium chloride. The, the resources are linked. The studies are linked as to why, um, why we avoid them. So this isn't, you know, witchcraft. <laughs> There's real people that truly care that have made these guides and resources available to us. Um, and if you need any help along the way navigating some of this information, do reach out. So you can see that there's a lot of ones, a lot of okay ingredients, but there's enough of these that make me put that back on the shelf, if that makes sense. Any questions about that? I don't have a question, but I just wanna say like, I feel like this is kind of like front loaded. So once you do all of this research and then you find like an ingredient that's safe and then you find like, you know what? it's safe and I like it, it works for me. Then the next time you just keep buying it. And so it can be more manageable in that way where like you figure it out one time and then if you like it, because you said there have been some products that you tried and you're like, this actually just didn't work for me, I need to switch. But then like once the work is done, it's done and you just keep buying the same. Oh my God. Thing. I think that this, so I also did a talk on food and if you guys haven't listened to that, I recommend that as well. But um, this is 3000 times easier than food. It's, I feel like it's a lot more information that people maybe don't understand like food we kind of all get it you kind of know what's good for you and what's not good for you but there's more to learn this is like a whole new world but it is so true Lynn like once you make this swap you don't even have to think about it again I have my products coming to me on Amazon subscribe and save or you know just to, just there's easier ways around it food you have to think what am I gonna eat for breakfast what am I gonna eat for lunch yeah. um more work so, yes, so um, Mina just asked if we can do a search on environmental working group. So, yes, um, we can search Avena Lotion. Okay, so uh, this is a baby daily moisture product. Um, and again, rated a two, green overall. I scroll down and the first thing my eyes go to, one, two, three, four, oranges and one is petroleum. I know that that can be contaminated with 1,4-dioxane. Um, it's not something that I wanna use. Another thing you can do is um, you can, let's see, I don't know if this one will show up here, but you can Google an ingredient. That was not the best ingredient, let's do this. You're like, okay, she mentioned this phenoxy whatever. <laughs> phenoxyethanol a couple times. What is it? So you click the actual ingredient and it tells you that this ingredient can range um, in concern. And then you can read through all the data that they have here. It also has products with this ingredient. You can see how widespread it is. Foundation, eyeshadow, lipstick. So you see, okay, this is highly used in our cosmetics. Um, holy moly, that's a lot of products. 
And then if you actually do click, it will take you to, this is clickable and it will take you to the products. And then it talks about the different hazards. So this website, oh my gosh, in the beginning of this journey, I spent hours on this website. So I think we're almost done, but let me quickly touch on this just because it doesn't all come down to reducing our toxic body burden just with the products we use on a daily basis. You can get, <clears throat> I was just reading your question. Can you guys see when I pull up the questions? No, okay. Um, are there other places to search if it doesn't, if a product doesn't show up on the environmental working group? Honestly, I would tell you if you're on Facebook, just feel free to post in my group. Um, I look at ingredients labeled all the time for people. We all try and help each other out. Um, I would look up individual ingredients if I can't find a product and I would look at the banished list and that's how I would try and specifically find. For me, once you know what the ingredients are, um, I don't really care about the rating. I don't care if it's a one or if it's a two. If it has all the ingredients that I know are safe, then I'm okay using it. Um, so I don't get too hung up on if it's a three or a five. Um, and I try and just utilize the ingredients as the main resource. Um, water. Our water, like I said, is a big source. So this this has actually copy and pasted the the list um, from the begin the first slide, which is where do we find environment where do we find toxins in our environments? You can do a water filtration system, um, which is a great investment for your health. There's information there. Um, filters throughout your home, food, eating organic, um, reduces pesticide exposure. There's a whole talk um, in Lynn's uh, in Kindred Beginnings archives that I did on food. Um, food, beverage, packaging, purchase glass when available and, and avoid plastics and plastic lined products. Um, chemicals around us. <clears throat> if you're buying new furniture, if you're painting, if you are doing things like that, you can start to look for safer products. There are different certifications that you can look for. Um, dust, you can use a vacuum that has a higher filtration to remove some of that stuff and avoid flame retardant treated fabrics and ditching plastic. So reducing our plastic use, why? Because BPA is linked to male and female infertility. Um, and a lot of companies remove BPA, but there's like BPS and BPF and a whole bunch of other things that are probably less widely studied and probably just as harmful. So ditching plastic when you can is another swap you can make. If you're looking at the food store and you see peanut butter in glass or peanut butter in plastic, I choose peanut butter and glass. Um, I store leftovers or hot foods in glass rather than plastic. Uh, stainless steel for water bottle or food storage. There's food grade silicone as an option. Um, paper bags instead of Ziploc bags. Beeswax covers. Um, actually, some of these things are available through Norwex as well, like silicone storage lids. Um, I avoid cans, especially during our fertility journey because it's it's, linked, it's lined with some kind of plastic. Don't put plastic in the dishwasher or microwave if you are using plastic. And my favorite is receipts. They're lined with BPA. Fun fact of the day. Get them emailed when you can or just continue to shop online and stay home during the pandemic. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe I should have put this slide first um, before I went into everything. So lesson learned. But where do you begin? Um, I say you sit down, you make a list of, this is what I did. This, so this is why I say this, <laughs> but do what you want and what feels good for you. But this is what I did. I made a list of the products that I use every single day. I literally sat there and ran through my routine. Wash my hair, brush my teeth, put deodorant on, moisturizer, blah, blah, blah. Make a list of products I use once in a while. Toilet bowl cleaner, Windex. Um, what else is a once in a while product? Hairspray. I only use hairspray once in a while or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, I don't use that every day when I do my hair. So just think of the products that you don't use daily, but that you still have in your home. You're going to want to swap the things that you use every day first. And you're going to do that because you're going to run out of them first because you're using them every day. So you don't need to throw everything out. Um, 
the slide that you saw at the beginning where I had piled up all the rest of my toxins, they were stuff that like I just had been had sitting in a cabinet we weren't using anymore. Like I just couldn't get rid of it if I tried because we just didn't like it or didn't use it or whatever the reason. That's when I suggest when you feel like you've hit a wall to do an overhaul. Um, tips and tricks. Buy during sales. So when products that you like are on sale, that is when you stock up. Amazon, you can subs subscribe and save money. If you have these things coming to you monthly, you can always change to every three months, every six months. Try to find multiple products that are clean from the same company to reduce the amount of places you have to buy from because a lot of people just want to go to the store and they want to buy stuff. And I want you to just take that off as an expectation because it is, it is not in line with reducing toxins all the time. Why? Because when toxin-free products, like for example, crunchy, you will never buy off the shelf. Why? Because we'd have to put harmful preservatives to be able to ship it all over, to be able to have it sit on a shelf and be widespread and available. So shopping small is the way to go when it comes to this. Branch Basics, for example, is a small company, Crunchy. Um, <clears throat> that is why some of these swaps are made purely through online shopping. Um, Dr. Bronner's, you can find in stores. So like multi-use products like Dr. Bronner's are my favorite because it's a great way to start making your own like vinegar and um, different recipes. Do not ask me for a DIY recipe because I do not DIY anything. <laughs> it's just not my thing, except my soap. Um, so I want you to remember that what you do every single day matters more than what you do once in a while. I don't want you to panic if you make changes. You know, I've seen women... Um, people have reached out to me like, oh my gosh, I have a mouse in my garage. No joke. What chemical free option can I use? I'm like, you don't. You use a chemical and you kill the mouse. Like the risk is the mouse. The mouse can make you sick. You kill the mouse with chemicals and then you move on. If you have kids in the home, you don't let the kids near the chemicals. You, you try not to walk out in your bare feet. Whatever it is, just use the chemical and kill the mouse. Get the mouse out. Um... I've had other like scenarios like that where I'm like, you don't want to paralyze yourself into making these decisions and, and being fearful of everything you select um, because it's not about that. It really is about what are you doing every day that can make a difference in your health, in your hormonal health, in your, in your overall um, health in reducing your toxic body burden. Use chemicals to kill a mouse, but like maybe change your moisturizer or your shampoo, okay? Um, do we have any other questions? I'm happy to answer questions here via email on my Facebook group. So whatever anybody has, if you're watching this after the fact, even if it's five months from now, do not hesitate to reach out and ask questions. Um, happy to always chat and educate and there's like a slew of information um, in the Facebook group if you need a place to start. Yeah, the Toxin Free RD. So remind everybody where they can find you. Can you go back to that slide? Yes, so um, I didn't link that either. Um, but yes, so here's the group, my email. And we'll send it in the follow-up email too. Yeah, and um, I didn't put in, I did put in like um, websites if you want to check those out, there's there and there. What do you know about Puracy? They use, um, no. okay, so actually I want to say something else. I, because I'm so involved with Crunchy, I can tell you whatever you want to use from Crunchy is safe and you can use anything from Crunchy. I don't feel that way about Norwex. And I don't feel that way about almost any other company. Um, if Crunchy comes out with a product where I don't like the ingredients, I will let you know. Um, it's it's de so dependent on the product that is being formulated and what it's used for that dictates the ingredients. So it's hard to, to blanket statement that a single company creates all safe products, if that makes sense. So you have to look at it. It would just be so much easier. It really would. 
like just like here's the list of things that you can buy and like here's this company and everything you buy from there I know and it's it's just not like that yet I don't think that we won't ever achieve that Lynn I think that the consumer demand for safer products is there and I think in time um it will be more the norm because think about companies like um Pampers that's been around for ages now marketing safer diapers or ingredients um, in their wipes. And it's something like some of these major corporations are coming out with safer products and you're like, so you have the safe product line and then you have the regular product line. And it's like, when are the consumers going to start voting with their dollars and get to the point of stop making the crappy stuff, just focus on making the good stuff. Um, And there's a lot of companies like that too. I can't think of others like, oh, like Doritos. Doritos, you have regular Doritos and then you have the organic Doritos. And it's like, okay, <laughs> which one do you, you know? So we definitely vote with our dollars, but ingredients, I will say Pure Z, um, the last time I looked, which has been quite some time, one of the products was containing um, preservatives that I wouldn't recommend, but they may have changed by now. Companies reformulate um, all the time. So I, uh, always recommend if you buy something, check the ingredients again, make sure they didn't change the packaging and the ingredients or, uh, formulation that way. Did I overwhelm you? Me? Yeah, I always, but you know, like, I always get really overwhelmed with this stuff because I want to do all the things. And it's just, I, I, I'm not educated enough to do all the things. And I use you as a resource, as you know. Um, but I did I did two big things, right? I did do the water filtration. Um, they came to my house and then they went to Lauren's house right after my house, right? <laughs> um, so I, I did that because for me, it was not just the drinking water. It was when you brought up, like, we don't just drink our water. We use our water to wash our dishes, to wash our laundry, to wash our bodies. So it's not just the water we're consuming. It's this water is, you know, all all over us, right? Um, So the water thing, the water change was a big one for me. And I also have the air doctor. So I I have the air filtration. And originally I was going to buy like four of them. And you were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you don't need to, like, go crazy and put, like, four. You're like, you can just get, like, one for upstairs and one for downstairs. Because I was like, well, it's just, like, this many square feet. You're like, no, no, just. And Lauren was like, no, they're easy to move. You can just be portable. So, like, those were those were my two big changes. And I've slowly been, uh, you know, we, we bought in bulk, especially with the pandemic, because I learned a lot about this at the pandemic. We bought in bulk because that's what everybody was doing, right? So, like, we have, like, stockpiles of stuff. And as I'm using that up, I am switching over to something different and that's how I've been approaching it because it's more manageable too to like throw everything out and then to start like it's just it's so much it is um, I would add to like one thing Christy one of the things that you said that I loved was the idea of getting rid of paper towels so um (laughs) I'm not I'm not there yet (laughs) I hear you and that's okay um so you know for me I just we ne- I never grew up with paper towels, honestly. My mother never, ever, ever bought them, ever. Um, so, like, I really didn't use paper towels until I got married. And when the pandemic started, I was like, oh, you can't pay- find paper towels anymore. Let me talk to my mom and see what she did. And I literally did the same thing you did. I just went back to using my microfiber, which yeah. is so, it's so much more environmentally friendly, first of all. Um, and it cleans better, which is, which is amazing. So, so it's, you know, like you're saying, it's all about the small shifts, right? The small changes. And I didn't want to say this because I really don't want to overwhelm anybody, but now I'm going to say because you brought it up again. Oh, no. Your towels contain glue in the fibers. So when I grew up, we would cover the food in the microwave with a paper towel. So I've I bought my pizza, pizza with a paper towel to get the grease off. That's probably not as bad as heating it atop your Okay. Meal. All right. <laughs> you do that, Lynn. I don't I, take that. I don't want to use a microfiber cloth for that. I just don't. I know. Like, what else would I put? I, what else would I blot it with? Or, or, or what about napkins? Listen, I live with a furry animal that vomits, so there will always be paper towels in my home. Always. You just, 
you know. I wanted to like you said it's like the same thing with the mouse with the mouse idea right so it's like you can you absolutely still have them but maybe you use them less right it's all it's all about to you know learning like you said learning about your exposure and for yourself figuring out what you're okay with and what you're not okay with right and making those those little changes I wanted to ask Amina if you're willing to chat do you have a Facebook I do. I'm probably one of the pending requests that you have. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will look at that. I never ever go on here on my computer, only on my phone. So I, I couldn't even find it from the main page. I had to like figure it out. I do a lot of my posting for my phone, but I just wanted to show you so you get to the group. Um, and if you hit announcements, um, usually, oh, I have a thread where you can post a label so we can look at the ingredients together. Um, mindset that's a good one to read but uh la, la, la. where am i going it's the oldest one <sighs> okay the toxin free master list so when you're like oh my god just tell me what i can use um this is a good place to start so i talk mostly about you know a couple things and then you know some brands i like are deodorant um shampoo etc and then there's also this lovely little search bar um, if you just search like laundry and you're going to see like tons of previous posts on laundry detergent and you can read through the comments and you can post this talks about the water filtration. So, you know, that's how you use a search bar. And then, yeah. I don't know if you saw in the questions. I didn't know if you knew off the top of your head about Mrs. Myers. Mrs. Myers. Oh, it's a greenwashed product. I hate to. Yeah. <laughs> I was worried about that. <laughs> They're the culprit of greenwashing and that frustrates me. They're one of the biggest offenders. This is my favorite little hut. Oh, for, I say I have that. Sorry, I have to be like, Chrissy, stop there. I, I love this. <laughs> The cutest thing, first of all, and what is I, it? It gives me great joy. This is this is my microfiber um, counter, like little cloths, and then oh, I have stop it. for it. But wait, it gets better. So you, when you use a microfiber cloth, like let's just say I clean my kitchen table and my like kitchen counters with this, like a wet cloth, then you rinse it out in the sink, you wring it dry, and then it lays over the top to dry. And then when it's dry again, it's completely clean because it has that back lock silver in it that prevents like growth. Like literally, I smell the cloth because it doesn't smell like anything. It smells and feels brand new and you use it again and you can use it like many times before you need to wash it. It's my favorite I'm thing sorry, too. I have to draw the line of getting a house for my cloth. And it's very you know, tiny. It's very compact, isn't it, Lauren? It's like almost yeah. smaller than it looks. You think it looks big, but it's 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 like this big. It's very tiny. It's like Lauren, a, you have this it's like a napkin yeah, holder. I do. Yeah, yeah. Don't you have an, a a house for your napkins, Lynn? I have different themed ones right now. It's still snowflakes. I have not switched it to my spring yet. Yes, I do. <laughs> Don't talk to me about my napkins. I'm sure next you're going to tell me my napkins and my tissues and everything else. Okay. It's just like, I hear what you're saying and I'm making fun. It's just so overwhelming. Like these are products that we use like all the time. And just, it's so overwhelming to think about all the things. It really, it really is. Um, I, I mean, I, well, I'm going to let you in. I'm going to approve your request into the group. And then you can definitely um, search. I, I'm, I'm sure I have a post in there somewhere. About Mrs. Myers. If you, if you type in Myers or something like that. I probably don't want to see it though. Huh? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't believe you. Because I have my subscribe and save. <laughs> Mrs. Myers. So I, I, I just have to ask because I, I don't know you. I know the other three girls. I just want to know like, did you know any of this coming into this conversation or is this completely brand new information for you? No, I, so I, do, are you familiar with Young Living? Yeah. So I had, it was like a long time ago, gotten a present, like an in-person presentation with um, okay. somebody who was selling Young Living and 
she had like you know the styrofoam and all the mcdonald's french fries and all the you know like all the visual aids to show how terrible all the things were and uh and i in general i'm a pretty uh green person okay. even though now maybe i'm more of a greenwashed person <laughs> um but uh yeah like i have the laundry balls already and i don't i mean i don't wear any makeup or like do any perfumey things anyway but yeah i think there's definitely a lot more that I still can do. Yeah, there, I mean, that's true for everybody. I, I commend you for coming to this talk because I think it's a hard topic. I think it's something that um, ignorance is certainly bliss. There's <laughs> a lot of this that I wish I just didn't even know. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. But once you know, you know, and then you can make changes and, and go forward. Right. And I, I'm like, Lynn, I have, I have to stop myself from trying to do all the things all yeah. at once one at a time that's people are like oh, I, oh, oh my god where do I start and it's like and to keep it in perspective too because yeah. like if I'm gonna not eat anything because I'm gonna refuse to eat anything that's in a can or in plastic or 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 then I'm like well <laughs> the trade-off of malnutrition <laughs> yeah exactly probably worse you know yeah exactly right do I never eat it out no I eat out all the time why because I don't feel like cooking all the time like balance right and my food it comes in styrofoam or in plastic or it comes in um like wrapped in you know when you get a wrap and they wrap it in the thing yeah that's te that's teflon that's waterproof material right we've all lived many years with these exposures but uh, you know I think our health some of us are more sensitive bodied than others and there are certainly impacts um that we may never you may never know how much it impacts your body um so a lot of this is uh, these changes are made in in faith of believing that they are going to impact your health and, and looking at the studies where they've been tested and and what changes to make first. Right. Yeah, and I, and I agree with like doing one one thing at a time. And like I've, I've officially switched over to uh, metal or bamboo straws. So, um, awesome. you know, it's, but it took me a while to be like, I gotta have a little carrying case for my straws and I have to make sure I have you know one in my car and one in my you know bag and what you know so you take them out with you that's awesome I love that yeah yeah be, and I and I uh, well I don't go to restaurants anymore but when I used to <laughs> I would, like tell the tell the waiter exactly. like no, no straw like please in the before times right Amina right back, back in the day <laughs> Back in the exactly. days where we did things. <laughs> right. When I used to go out. Right. I would say the pandemic alone has done one of two things. It's either um, reduced everybody's chemical exposure because we're not going as many places or it's far increased it because of some of the product choices that people have been making. Right. Um, I haven't used a single Clorox wipe th this entire year. Um, because you don't need to. So there's other, there's some resources in there if you want to search on COVID and what you can do to kill COVID and cleaning products because you don't, you know, people might think, oh, well, I can't ditch my cleaning products now because we're in the middle of a pandemic, but that's not true. There are um, toxin-free EPA registered products that kill COVID. So here's a question. Gatorade comes in a plastic bottle. I don't think that there's any way to get Gatorade that doesn't involve plastic unless you buy the powder, which is still in plastic. And so would you say pour the Gatorade into a glass? No. Nope. So because it's manufactured and sitting in that plastic, that's where the risk, you know, is too. 
plus it can leach over time. But I don't like Gatorade as a product because of the ingredients alone. Um, if you search hydration in my group, there's another couple things that should come up. Um, I do like to use powders that come like in one plastic carton because then it's not single use plastics and it's right. It's not like a liquid. It's, it's probably benign. Um, that it's not like leaching. It's nearly impossible to avoid plastic. Have uh, you seen the organic Gatorade? Like a, a Gatorade brand? No, I have not seen that. But there's there's a company called Numa and there's a company called Greater Than, both of which um, help me come in a, what's called a Tetra Pack, and that is like a it looks like a cardboard cart and it has different layers in it, none of which are plastic. I don't mm -hmm. believe that are touching the actual liquid. Um, so Lynn, I think that one of our recommendations is usually Gatorade, isn't it? Pro yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's why she's um, probably asking. It's typically I'm on after. A Gatorade. I post, subscribe and save organic Gatorade. So, Lynn, let's touch base on that after, because I would love to give you like a little. Yeah. Because um, it's typically for after a retrieval to pr mm -hmm. to um, prevent um, hyperstim. For right? that, I would recommend IV hydration. IV? IV hydration. It's called Off of Amazon, and it comes in packets. It's a great electrolyte replacement, and it is okay. really um, safe. High in sugar, um, but that's you're using it for replenishment at that point. Um, yeah, I'm using it to try to minimize migraines during treatment. Yeah, IV hydration because of um, Gatorade. Oh, I haven't looked at a Gatorade in a while, but probably has artificial color. Um, oh, it's organic. I haven't looked, I have to look this up. I haven't seen that one yet. This is like my Water, organic, organic sugar, citric acid, organic natural flavor, sea salt, sodium citrate. Potassium. The natural right. flavors, that's scary. No, it's, it, they said, she said organic natural flavors. So it follows organic practices, which is awesome. Oh. And it's clear. So there's no dye or anything in it. Okay, I'm okay with that. So I can recommend organic clear Gatorade. Organic Gatorade, yeah, because there's no artificial dye. But the IV hydration is pretty good too, if you want to switch. Okay, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Yeah, no, I mean, I recommend that all the time. I mean, a new month. and McDonald's yeah. french fries, but you know. The organic so Gatorade is cheap, but I feel yeah. better about drinking it. Yeah, I mean, Christina, I'm just, as a, you know, other thing, I'm a migraine sufferer. In fact, I'm having a migraine today, right now, which is why yeah, I'm not too. on camera. Um, <laughs> so I would just talk to your doctor about um, magnesium supplements, uh, during this time too, because magnesium can really help with um, protection yeah. in the blood barrier brain um, and it helps prevent migraines. It's really, really, really helpful. If I've tried it outside of treatment and it doesn't work, do you think it would try now? It, it, it actually, now? yeah. So um, what's interesting is there's a lot of research around um, magnesium for when your hormones are changing, which is certainly yeah. what happens during treatment. So I would, you know, give it ask your doctor and if it, give it a try. If it works for you, that's great. You know? Yeah. Yeah. For some reason I was taking it and I think my doctor actually recommended that I stop taking it when I started this process, but I'll follow up. Thank you. Ask why. Sometimes it's easier to, when I would come in with my personal list of supplements. No, I, it was actually my PCP, my primary care uh, physician is a naturopathic doctor. And she, oh, nice. I was, cause I, so I would you stop a, taking it. Uh, natural progesterone treatment to try to minimize the migraines before. And she was like, stop all that when you start this. That's different then, because some doctors are like, supplements, uh, I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank, thank you so for much. coming. Thank you yeah. for all this information, even though you've overwhelmed me and I know some of this. Um, 
I would, yeah, I would love to hear if you guys um, do watch some of the documentaries and do a little bit more digging because I think they are good stuff and none of my friends will watch them. So I'd love to chat with someone about it. Who would watch Ignorance it? Ignorance is bliss sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, my friends are but, like, guys, they're for sale on Yankee Candles. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> um, you are just such a great resource. Thank you for all the offerings. Um, it was so generous of you to offer like those, those discounts and those promos and things. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for your time for putting this together. Sure. Um, thank you for welcoming people into your Facebook community. You are a wonderful resource. And I have a list of things that I will be contacting you about, including getting the body bar, <laughs> not the facial <laughs> bar. That will be, I'll tell you about that. <laughs> Thank you. And um, Amina, Christine, Lauren already hopped off, but um, you'll be getting a survey. So if you could please fill that out, um, we would really appreciate the feedback. It just helps us make sure that we put together events that people are interested in and that are helpful. So thank you in advance. Sure. Thank you both. Well, thank you all three. Okay. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Take care. Bye.